Hello everyone and welcome to this demo. In this demo, we will understand how to create reports using Excel services in Project Server 2010. So without much delay, let's get directly into the project web app and understand what are the default reports that Microsoft ships and how we can create many more such reports using Excel services. So what you see here is a project web app homepage. In 2010, on the homepage itself, we have a link which takes us to the Business Intelligence Center. The Business Intelligence Center essentially is a sub-site to the project web app. So if you look at the URL, it's easy to understand that many more such Business Intelligence Center sites can be created. So if you have multiple departments or diverse reporting needs, you can go to site actions, choose a new site, and there it will give you an option to create a new business intelligence center page. Center page. Currently, we work with the default business intelligence center. The good news is, that BI Center ships a lots of sample reports and templates by default. So when I get inside sample reports, there will be a huge range of reports for resources, for projects, for timesheets that can be easily used out of the box. So this is a list of reports. Let's click on project cost and see how the report looks like. So when I click on project cost, it is rendering the report using Excel services for us. This report based on departments is trying to compare actual cost, baseline cost and cost value. Apart from these reports, which you just saw the sample reports, we also have additional folder for templates created. When I get inside the templates folder, these are the default templates and you will also have a separate template created for all the OLAP cube. So let's understand using one of these templates, how we can create a new report and then how we can render that report using Excel services. I'm going to use the timesheet template. So as the name suggests, template is going to be a blank file with free connection established to the database. So this is a blank pivot table report that you can see here, which is connected to the project server database. And that's how all the field list information is seen here. Just build up a report. I will add billable actual work into the value zone. Let's compare it with the planned work. So this was the total billable work and this was the sum of planned work. I would like to break it down further by resource name. So I will add resource name to the row area. Now this reports is comparing billable work versus sum of planned work. To make it more interesting, I will sort the billable work from largest to smallest value. So this will give me an indication which resource gave me maximum amount of billability in this particular zone. It also tells me which resource did not contribute much. To make it a little more interesting, I will also break it down by the timesheet line classification. So I will add timesheet line classification into the report filter area. Currently, this gives me a report for all types of classification. I can choose administrative and see how many users reported administrative work. In this case, I have only two users. Likewise, I can also see vacation time and the standard reported time. Let's also add the period start date into the given report. So I will choose period start date and add it to the row area. 
This will tell me each resource, respective dates for that resource and the reported time. This is good, but I would like to break up this report and see the time reported only based on quarters or maybe months or maybe years. So for the time being, I will remove resource name. So this tells me on a particular day, how much was the time reported, billable time reported and how much was the planned work. Because these are dates, I can easily group them based on months, quarters and years. So now this gives me a completely different report where I can compare billable work versus planned work based on quarters and based on months. Now if I would like to combine the two, let me create another pivot table here. So I'll go to options and I will choose select entire pivot table. Let me copy this and let me paste it here. So I have two similar looking pivot tables here. In the second pivot table, I will remove quarters and I will remove the period start date. And instead of the dates, I'll put resource name there. So I get to see two different reports in one single page. If required, I can also convert this to a pivot chart. Let's choose a pie chart. And here we have a nice looking pie chart also added into the view. I will change the look and feel of this chart to make it look better. Maybe this one. And to make our report little more interesting, I will also add some conditional formatting in our timesheet report. So I will choose color scales and choose three color scale option. So the maximum billable work would be in green and the minimum work would be in yellow. All the intermediate values would be a mixture of red and green and yellow. So now using the default template shipped by Microsoft, I have created a report which gives me three different views. The next step would be to share these reports with other users. To do so, I will upload this report to SharePoint. One method would be to upload the entire Excel file in SharePoint. The second method would be to use Excel services and expose only these three different areas, the two pivot table and a pivot chart. But before doing that, let's give names to each of these areas. So I click on the pivot table. Let's get into options and give this pivot table a name. So this is monthly timesheet. Likewise, I click on my second pivot table and give it a name. This is resource timesheet. And finally, I will also give a name to this pivot chart. Let's call it resource chart. That's all. Now, I will save this file to SharePoint such that only these three areas are exposed. To do so, I will go to File, Save and Send, click on Save to SharePoint, browse for the location where I would like to save this file, but before that, click on Publish Options, choose Items in the Workbook. So now, all the items that I had named in the workbook are displayed. I can choose which items should be exposed on the SharePoint site. In this case, I will choose all the three options. So now I have saved this Excel report in SharePoint after enabling the publish options and selectively choosing the two pivot tables and the pivot chart to be shown on the web. Just to let you know, if you do not want to save it directly from Excel, while you are here in SharePoint required folder, you can upload the Excel file from here. So saving can happen or upload can happen from SharePoint or through Excel. The choice is yours. In this case, I've already uploaded timesheet report, the file which we just created. Now 
when I click on this particular file, instead of opening the entire Excel workbook, it just opens monthly timesheet information for us. This is because I had enabled the three different areas. If I go towards the right under view, I have all the tables and the chart option listed down. So let me click open this. I have resource chart and I also have resource timesheet. So if I choose resource chart, it will now show me the same pie chart which I had selected. Additionally, if I now choose resource timesheet, it shows me the resource timesheet. You'll notice the conditional formatting and the filter area on the top are retained and I can use it. So if I would like to now see administrative work, let me unselect all and select only administrative. So now my pivot table will get accordingly filtered. So interactivity remains and the reports are rendered on the web using Excel services. So we get best of both worlds. So this was a small demo of how you can create reports. Now that you know Excel services, you know how reports and project can be created. The two can be combined together and very good looking dashboards and reports can be created. So in Project Server 2010, the data analysis view no longer exists because it's not required. You use Excel, use project, use pivot table and have reports at your disposal. So just to quickly take you through the advantages of Excel services, reports are very easy to build up and share because most of the users are familiar with Excel. You need not require IT or additional development or coding to create reports. Any end user or project manager can create such reports. Because reports are created in Excel, you can analyze it, slice and dice it, drill down further and have a better understanding of your business data. Also, the reports are now available on web and can also be edited on web. So the destination machine need not require to have Excel loaded. We can view the report on web. So this is what I had to cover as part of Excel services. Hope you liked the demo and found it useful. If you have any further questions or would like to know more about Project Server 2010 Excel services, please feel free to email me at manmeet.chaudhry at advisorcom.com. Thank you.